actor is a pattern of test-driven development. The principle is that before you do any development work at all, you would actually write a test to see whether or not that work has resulted in a successful outcome. Now this might sound very counterintuitive and the wrong way around because of course if you write the test first, if you're, if you're testing for the outcome before you've done any work, well of course that test is going to fail. By definition it will fail. But there's a method in the madness there. Because if you were to do things the other way around, if you were to do the development work first, you're making an assumption that may not actually be correct. You may be doing work that simply doesn't need to be done. In other words, the requirements that the system has to fulfill may already be met. Now, you wouldn't know that unless you'd actually tested for that behavior first. So, what you do in Red Green Refactor, or uh, test first, test driven development, is to write a test first, which exercises the system in such a way um, as to see whether or not a, a successful outcome is achieved. If it isn't achieved, and um, one typically would expect that it would not be, then what you then do is to code to that test. You then write just enough code to cause that test to then pass. By writing just enough code, you have satisfied the requirements by definition, and you've also made sure that no additional waste is incurred. Right? You do just enough to pass the test and no more. If further work needs to be done, then that's another test for perhaps another day. Red-Green Refactor is so called because of the, uh, some of the, the, the features of the, the tools that are used in test-first or test-driven development. Uh, what quite often happens with, uh, with, with uh, test-driven development tools is there'll be a red light that will appear on, uh, on, on a, a taskbar or on a, on, 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 a, on, a, on a window somewhere to show that a test has failed. When a test has been passed successfully, then that light will show green. You may run multiple tests concurrently to make sure that a system has not been broken by any changes that you've made, and you would expect all of those lights then to be green. So red-green refactor expresses the essential principle that when you first of all write a test, you would expect it to be red, you would expect it to fail, right? You then code to make sure that the test is satisfied. You put in just enough work to make sure that the requirements are met. The light then goes green. So that's the red-green part of red-green refactor. The refactor part is very important, but quite often forgotten about in test-driven development. With red-green refactor, once you've coded the system to pass the tests, you then refactor, you then rework the design, you rework the infrastructure if needed, so that it achieves results more efficiently. Because when you're coding to test, when you are doing just enough work to make sure that test passes, you're not necessarily coding in a way that is particularly elegant. You're not necessarily coding in a way that respects organizational design principles or the best design principles that you could possibly uh, come up with. So refactoring is important. You, you modify the code, you improve the code, but without breaking the test. So you go from red, to green. You then refactor the work. In other words, you redesign it, you reconfigure it, so the code is more elegant, so it's more maintainable, more sustainable, perhaps more scalable. But you run the tests after you've done that refactoring as well. And of course, if you haven't broken the tests, they will still be green. So you've got a safety harness in place when you do your refactoring. You've got a safety harness of being able to tell whether or not those changes that you've made in refactoring have actually gone and spoiled the results. So that's the red-green refactor pattern.